today's lesson is brought to you by Ashton Clemens. Ashton is a representative in the North Carolina General Assembly. She represents North Carolina citizens from Greensboro, North Carolina. Who is your representative from your area? Hi everyone, it's State Representative Ashton Clemens and I am so excited to join the Teachers of the Year from across our state in giving learning experiences that you all can watch at home. I'm a state representative that lives in Greensboro, North Carolina, but before I was a state representative, I was a teacher and I taught kindergarten, first and second grade and then was a school principal. And so I'm so excited to have the opportunity to, to be one of the lessons that the Teacher of the, of the Year are rolling out across our state. And today I'm going to teach you guys a lesson about how laws are passed in the North Carolina legislature and for North Carolina. So I get to merge my favorite things, which is teaching children and making laws to improve our state all in one thing. So I'm glad to be here with all of you today. So. If you were in my classroom or if you were joining me on the House floor in the North Carolina General Assembly, you would know that I asked a lot of questions and pause and let kids answer. And unfortunately, I can't hear all your answers today. I wish I could. So instead, I'm going to pause and you're going to answer the question either to someone that's with you, your family member, if you have a sibling that you're listening with, you guys can talk about it. But if you're just watching this by yourself, still say the answer out loud. And maybe if you say it really loud, I hear it all the way in Greensboro. But either way, when I pause, I want you to answer either in your brains or to somebody else at your house so that we know that you're thinking about these really important things. All right, so let's get started. First of all, I want you to know that in where you live, there's lots of different groups that are elected to make different laws and rules for different parts of how you live. So we live here in Greensboro, North Carolina. And in Greensboro, there is a Greensboro City Council. And the City Council is in charge. They represent all of the city of Greensboro and they make rules and laws that our people that live in our city have to follow. Then all of the little cities across our state, so whether you live in Charlotte or Raleigh or Greensboro or Altryville or Atlantic Beach or Manio or in the mountains in Boone, all cities have a city council that is representing them and that makes rules for their city. Then all of their cities are in a county and a county usually have lots, has lots of different cities in it or towns or small areas. So when we, where we are in Greensboro, we live in Guilford County and there's a county commission that makes rules and expectations and decisions for our county. And those people are elected as well. All of the counties make up our state and in North Carolina, we have a hundred counties. And so the state has a state legislature which is where I am, and we make laws that happen and that impact everyone that lives in our state. So all of the counties, no matter where you are in our state, if we pass a law in Raleigh that's a state law, then all of those deal with everyone in our state. Then there is the federal government, and that happens in Washington, D.C., the capital of our United States. So we live in a city and the cities are in counties and counties are in a state and then all of our 50 states are represented in Washington DC in our country which is the United States. And so in Washington DC there is a house and senate and the president work together to pass laws that they think should happen for everyone in our country. And then here in North Carolina we also have a house and senate and we work together to pass laws with the governor who is elected for our state. All right, so I'm gonna pause right there and I want you to tell me all the different kinds of laws that impact you where you live. So tell the person beside you or you can talk to me just like I'm there.
Okay, so now I heard you said that you have a city county, a city council, county commissioners, the state legislature, and the federal government all work together to make laws for where you live. So I'm going to talk about the state legislature because that's where I get to spend my time. In the state legislature, there are two parts to it, or two chambers. There's the North Carolina Senate, and the North Carolina Senate has 50 members. So the North Carolina House has 120 members. So what happens, let's take the House for example, we have 120 members. So our whole state of North Carolina is divided into districts, they're called. And each district votes on who they think should represent them in the North Carolina House. So my district has, and all of our districts, have about 75 or 80,000 people. So everyone in that district got to vote on whether I was the right person to go to Raleigh and represent them. We also all live in a Senate district. So the state of North Carolina is divided into 50 Senate districts, and they each have around 250,000 people that represent that they represent when they go to Raleigh. So I live here in House District 57, that's my house number, but I also have a state senator, which is State Senator Gladys Robinson, who represents me in the Senate. So every person in North Carolina has a representative and a senator who represents them. And we go to Raleigh to work on things that we think are needed to help make our state better. Now, Lots of people think we are passing laws, a lot of laws, which we are, um, but I want to teach you the process of how an idea for a law actually has to go through to get a law. Well, guess what? It is much longer than you think that it will be. So the first question I want to ask you about that is how do you think we come up with the different laws that we're going to try and put forth? How do you think we come up with ideas that we think, oh, this should be a law or that should be a law? I'm going to pause right there because I want you to think of how do we come up with ideas for what we think should be a law and what you might have some ideas of laws that you think that there should be. Okay, so hopefully you came up with some ideas for a law that you would like to see passed in North Carolina. Our ideas for laws can come from problems that we see. I think a lot of times that's what happens. People see problems and they want to try to fix them, so they try to make laws to fix them. They might come from a constituent. So a constituent is someone that I represent who might send me an email and say, you might not know about this, but this is a really big problem. Here are some ideas to fix it. And that would be a law. They can even come from school students. So I got to work on a law last, or a bill, that before it comes to law, I'll tell you that in a minute. I got to work on that last session from some students from Brooks Global Studies, which is actually where I was the principal. And even before I was in the legislature, they had the idea that we should have a state cookie. And so they wrote a representative, uh, Representative Hardister, who put that idea into a bill to try to make it a law. So ideas can come from anywhere, but mostly they're coming from, or a lot of times they're coming from problems that we see and ideas for how we're going to try and fix it. Okay, so you have your idea for a problem that you want to fix. The first thing you do is you make that idea into a bill, and we have people at the legislature that help us turn that idea into a bill that we can actually work on. So that's the first thing we do. And once you have a bill, you have to submit it to the clerk of the house, and then the rules chair decides what committee needs to hear that bill, or which committee, because usually it's more than one. Every committee has representatives who are focused on a certain subject. So I, for example, was on the education committee where we talked about K-12 schools, and I was also on a committee where we talked about universities. 
and finance, which is the money coming into our state, and commerce. Those are my committees, but there are lots of different committees. There's transportation is a committee, health is a committee, um, wildlife resources is a committee. So lots of committees for different ideas. So when you turn your bill in, the rules chair in our house, which is one of the representatives who has been given that job by the speaker. The speaker of the house is the person that is in charge of running the whole House of Representatives. Right now, that speaker Tim Moore. And our rules chair is David Lewis. So when I submit my bill idea, Representative Lewis decides, well, these are the committees that need to hear this bill. Some bills go to one committee or two committees. Some bills might have to go to eight committees if it touches on a whole bunch of different areas. So you take your idea, your bill, it gets assigned to committee, and then you have to go to that committee and present your idea. And you say, these are the reasons that I think this is an important bill to move forward. People will ask you questions a lot of times, so you need to be ready to answer questions, but we also have staff that can help us with those questions. And every single committee votes on whether they think that bill is a good idea. So if I go to the first committee and they say it's a good idea, and I go to the next one, and I go to the next one. The last committee is all of our bills have to go through rules committee. But if every one of those committees says it's a good idea, or more people than not, so that's called the majority, say that it's a good idea, then I get to keep the bill moving. And if it goes through all my committees, I can bring it to the House floor. So when that bill comes to the House floor, all 120 members of the House are going to vote on whether they think that bill is a good idea for it to become a law in North Carolina. So I might stand up and with the microphone on the House floor and tell why I think it's a good idea. Some other people might not think it's a good idea. And so part of being a representative is debating, which means discussing our different perspectives on a bill or a law. And so we have a debate about the bill. People can stand up and say, yes, it's a good idea. No, it's not a good idea. And after all that, everyone gets to vote in the North Carolina House of Representatives. And as long as the majority of people that are present that day say yes, then that bill has passed the House of Representatives. If not the majority, so if more people say it's not a good idea, then that bill doesn't move forward. that it gets referred to the Senate. So every law that's passed in North Carolina has to be approved by the House and approved by the Senate. So if you pass it in the North Carolina House, it goes to the Senate and you have to go through Senate committees the same way that you go through House committees. Now sometimes people will say, we think that this is a good idea, but we want to change it in this certain way. And that's called an amendment. So a lot of times in committees, we make amendments so that we can make the bill and idea better as it moves forward. So it moves forward through the Senate committees, and if the majority keeps thinking it's a good idea in each of those committees, then the Senate will vote on it as well. And again, you have to have a majority. If the House, every, you get the majority of the House, you go through the Senate committees and get the majority, then the last person who has to say that they think it's a good idea and sign the bill into law is governor. Right now our governor is Governor Cooper. Everyone in North Carolina gets to vote for our governor. And so this governor is the executive office and they have to say, yes, I think it's a good idea. If he signs it, then it becomes a law. And your idea went through committees in the House, House floor where the House voted, Senate committee, Senate voted, and the governor says it's a good idea, then it becomes a law. But if he doesn't think it's a good idea, he can stop it and say, no, I do not think that this is a good idea. And he does something called a veto. And the governor can veto and say, no, this is not a good idea. If you can get a, the, a whole lot of people to support you in the legislature, you can do something called overriding the governor's veto. Um, so 
that's how a bill is made here in North Carolina. It seems like, I think, I didn't even realize how hard it was gonna be to get a bill passed until I got there and realized just how much you have to get it through before a bill can become a law in our state. So I'm gonna stop right there, and I want you to think about your idea that you came up with and what you would say to convince someone that it's a good idea. So pretend you are getting ready to go into the committee and you want everyone to vote for it. Come up with some reasons for why you think it's a good idea to convince your other representatives to support it.